thought if your timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, consider the clinical examination speaking. Can you begin? Uh, I'll enter the room. I'll yes. introduce myself. I'll wash the hands and I'll introduce myself. Hello, I'm Dr. Karma, one of the surgical candidates. I uh, May I confirm your name in this? please? Okay, I'm Lisa, 23 years old. Hello, Lisa. Nice to meet you. Uh, so today... Uh, I've been asked to examine the cranial nerves that supplies uh, your face. Uh, is it okay with you? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. So uh, to begin with, uh, did you notice any change in your smell recently? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, will just, uh, I would just like to check your scent. So I need you to close your eyes. And then I'll uh, close one nostril and then I'll check on each side individually. Um, I'll check uh, for the scent of soap or coffee or vinegar. Uh, then I'll go now, uh, Lisa, I'm going to check uh, your vision. Uh, I'll begin by having a close look at your eyes. I'll see for the people, the people in size, any, any, any asymmetry. Now I'm going to check your visual acuity. Uh, for that, I need to place her at uh, six meters from the wall. Now, Lisa, can you look at the wall and then read the chart placed on the wall from above downwards? Can you re read those letters for me, please? Okay. Then I'll check the color vision. For that, I'll use the Ishara chart. Then now, uh, Lisa, I'm going, uh, I'll uh, shine a light on your eyes. It will be a bit uncomfortable, but it won't last long. So can you place your uh, hand in between your eyes like this? Then I'll... Check for direct and indirect right light reflex. Now, Lisa, I'm going to check your accommodation reflex. Can you look at the wall over there and then uh, keep, uh, fix your gaze there? And then I'll place my finger or pen in front of her. And then now can you look at my finger? Then I'll see for convergence or constriction of the people. Now, Lisa, I'm going to check your visual field. Can you close... Uh, can you close uh, Would your patient right understand, eye? Understand, uh, yes, these uh, medical terminologies, accommodation reflex, visual field. You have to like say it I... in. in uh, okay, okay, ma'am. Uh, now Name I'm going language. to check. Uh, okay, I'm going to check uh, how far you can see yes. uh, on your sides. Now, can you close your right eye? I'll cl close my opposite eye. I'll just uh, I'll wiggle my fingers. When you can see it, uh, just uh, say yes. But you can, you have to fix your eye on my on my. If you have to fix your eye on my eye, then I'll keep uh, move my finger on the four directions. I'll do on the both. I'll do on both the sides, and I'll offer to do fundoscopy, uh, where I'll use the use a light with this instrument and then see the back of your eye. Now I'm going to ch check your eye movements. Uh, for that, uh, I'll sit uh, at the same level of the same level of the patient. Then I'll move. Uh, I'll need you to uh, uh, keep your head still, but follow follow your eyes uh, with my with my fingers, and I'll do the edge shape movement. Uh, you just uh, uh, le just let me know if you see any double vision. Then I'll do the edge shape movement to check the. Uh, Nerves, oculometer, trochlea, and abduction. Now, Lisa, I'm going to check the sensation on your face and then the muscles around uh, of your face. Uh, for that, I will uh, 
check two sensations that is with the cotton and the the, the spin then uh, can you close your eyes uh, for me and then uh, first i will uh, see whether she can feel the normal sensation i'll put on the upper chest and then this is how it feels now can you close your eyes for me and then i'll check for the sensation on the three areas of the uh, dry gymna that's the ophthalmic on the forehead the maxillary on the cheek and the mandibular on the chin with both cotton and the neurotip uh, then i'll check for the muscles of mastication that's the temporalis and the masseter i'll ask her to uh, uh, glance at it and then i'll feel the for temporalis and masseter now can you open your uh, can you uh, open your mouth and don't let me close it i'll check for the that muscle now i'm going to check the reflex on your jaw so you can just uh, slightly open your mouth and then i'll tap on your uh, jaw with uh, tap on your jaw with the hammer then uh, i'll uh, now Lisa, i'm going to check the muscles around your uh, of your face yeah before that i i just two quick questions uh, did do you hear sounds louder than usual yes okay. and uh, uh, did you notice any change in your test test yeah uh, now uh, I'll need you to do some uh, movements. Can you can you uh, raise your eyebrow, please? Okay. Can you close your eyes and don't let me open? Okay. Uh, can you can you uh, blow your cheeks? Uh, uh, blow your cheeks and don't let me push it. Can you purse your lip? Can you uh, show me your teeth? And then can you tense your neck muscles like this? I'll show. Then <clears throat> uh, now I'm going to check your hearing. Uh, I'll, I'll whisper, I'll close the opposite ear. I'll uh, block the opposite ear and then I'll whisper a word or letter on two distance, 15 meters and 60 meters on both the sides. Now I'm going to check your hearing with this, uh, with this uh, metal metal piece that's called tuning pop. We do okay, the Rennes test and the Weber's test. Case, no? Yes, uh, to complete my examination, I would like to do the other cranial nerve examination. Uh, yes. For the vestibular cochlea, I will complete the Rennes test, Weber's test, and then the, do the uh, uh, mass test for the balance. And I will also uh, do the uh, otoscopy. Yes. And uh, for the glossopharyngeal and vagus, I'll check the uh, uvula and then cuff. And for the uh, accessory, I'll check for the muscles, tra trapezius and the the muscle, and hypoglossa, I'll check for the tongue. Uh, Today I've uh, uh, examined a 23 years old uh, lady who who uh, who had a history of fall uh, and brought to A and E and complained of uh, headache with bleeding nose uh, and then uh, can uh, decrease hearing on both the ears on uh, on examination uh, <clears throat> on examination I found that uh, uh, the she had uh, decreased hearing on both the ears. And uh, the Rennes test was negative, whereby the yes. bone conduction was greater than uh, bone conduction was greater than air conduction, and then the waiver was lateralized to the. Uh, uh, since she could not hear uh, on both the ears, it was actually uh, lateral. Uh, waiver was lateralized to the affected side. Right. Yes. And uh, so the uh, rest yes. of the rest of the cranial nerve examination was normal. So to complete my examination. Yes, uh, considering this uh, examination findings, I would like to keep my differential as uh, the, uh, I would like to keep as the base of skull fracture. Yes. Uh, affecting the, uh, uh, affecting the uh, uh, vestibular cochlear nerve. Yes. And? And, uh, How would you confirm your diagnosis? Uh, to to confirm my diagnosis, um, to confirm my diagnosis, uh, I would like to I would like to do a CT scan of the CT scan of the uh, skull, on, uh, including the brain, and then. Uh, uh, would you, yes. Why would you go for CT scan and not for the MRI? CT scan because. Uh, since I'm suspecting fracture, then yes, uh, good. The, the bones are more uh, well visible on the CT scan. Yes, good. Okay.
if you will do the ear examination with the otoscope, uh, what is it that you would look at or would you would find? On that otoscope, since I'm suspecting vesicular fracture, I will find hemotympanum, ma'am, pictures of hemotympanum. Can you, uh, by looking at this image, can you tell it's from which side of the ear? Uh, this is the left, uh, left ear, depending left side of the bending membrane. How, how do you know? Uh, here I can see the uh, the cone of light entero inferiorly at the four, uh, four o'clock position, and then okay. umbo facing behind. Yes. Can you tell me some of the causes of uh, conductive hearing loss? Other than yes, uh, it, yes, it could be any 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 blockage in the external uh, external uh, optic meters or in the in the middle ear cavity. Yes. It could be any foreign body, any any uh, wax impacted wax, or it could be due to uh, due to otitis uh, 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 sorry otitis media uh, effusion of otitis media yes and it could be all right can you tell me uh, how exactly one should fit the otoscope uh, yes or uh, otoscope uh, yes, yes otos uh, to uh, while checking the otoscope we have to first retract the ear backwards and naturally with one hand and with the other hand we use uh, we hold the otoscope in a pen holding manner and then we insert it inside and then inside the external object canal and see. And what exactly do you see on continuous membrane or with otoscope? What are the different things that you could see? Yes, uh, on the uh, on the otoscope we can see the walls of the external external auditory the uh, external auditory canal. Then I uh, we can see the uh, see the uh, tympanic membrane. Whether it is uh, whether there is any perforation or not, we can see the uh, handle of the nilius. We can see any you can see any, the color. You can see if collection. it's uh, bulging or if it's arrhythmetic. If there are yes, any scars. Any bleeding. Okay, how should you withdraw otoscope? What is the procedure or how should you do it? You have inserted in for examination, you have examined, yeah. and how should you get it out of the space? Like just withdraw, withdraw it back now. Yes, carefully. Like... Just draw it back carefully. That's it. Good. Thank you. Uh, can anyone give feedback? Yes, please. Uh, as in case, uh, it was just clearly mentioned that uh, the patient has some ear issues. Yes. So um, as if the time is short, as we know. So can we start with the ear and then we proceed? If uh, time permits, then we proceed with the other cranial nerves. Exactly. Exactly. That's how one should do. Okay. Yes. Because time, you that know, it's, yes. That was my that was my question, and actually, I wanted to ask because the scenario says patient is semi semi comatose, so I was just wondering like how will I command and then how will she follow my command? Uh, sure. But maybe the scenario will be clearer. Yes, definitely, it will be a and, lot uh, more clear. Yeah, like what Doctor Memona asked, uh, I always had this question in cranial of examination, like. Usually we have the three scenarios, right, ma'am? Yes, yes. The pituitary adenoma with bitemporal amenopia, yes. the anterior fossa cranial tumor with the uh, and the bilateral anosmia, which decreased visual acuity, but and then lateral defective battle glaze and all. It came this one, uh, patient. And this fall. and this one we start. Yes, ma'am. So, like, uh, would it be safe to like uh, initially start with the cranial nerve associated with the scenario, and then yes, or and like, if time allows, then you do the other, the remaining. That's how you should do. Like to read the stem and carry out the examination according to the stem is very important. 
sometimes stem would not be the same or uh, it wouldn't be the same what you are practicing upon today. So you have to read the stem and then you have to carry out the examination accordingly. Yes. As uh, like in pituitary adenoma, obviously the eye signs are very important. Yes. But here in in this case, if we start with the eye signs, it will take around like four More or five time. minutes. Yes. Yeah. That's why I asked to give feedback. Yes. Now I have three hands. Who would want to begin first? Well, I just need to ask one question. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Like in this situation, the uh, stem says that the patient is semi comatose. So once we enter the cubicle, if the patient is an actor and he is actively yes, but then this is like just my stem because I don't want the patient to answer too many questions. So you have to conclude it okay. from a case. Thank okay, ma'am. Thank you. Because all the symptoms that I wrote, uh, if I would have said that patient was high alert, wouldn't make sense. Patient had head injury or like Dr. Karma came to it, that he would rule out. If the stem so says, uh, even if we just imagine that uh, is exam in the exam scenario, the stem says the patient is semi no, it won't. So are you going to enter the room and uh, ex explain to the examiner that as the patient is semi so it I won't be. perform? It won't be. In exam, it won't be. A patient would be actor and it won't, a patient would not be semi they won't, they won't write this. It's thank you, just my thank scenario. You. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Abbas. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Dr. Um, th and thank you uh, for the um, Dr. Karma. Um, I just wanted to say that um, from your ear, ear examination, um, you mentioned the you, you described yes that the, 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 it's the left ear, but um, I'm still not very clear on um, um, on your or your reason for describing it as the left ear. The cone of light on the left ear um, is at seven o'clock, not four o'clock, um, while on the right is five o'clock. Um, and if you check the image mom flashed, um, it's actually an image. Um, the cone of light is actually around seven o'clock, which is actually um, posted, uh, likely the left ear, actually. Um, while for the other one, it will be on um, five o'clock, just... Um, um, which that's for the right to be at five o'clock. That's just my contribution. All my other contributions have been made. Thank you. Yes, and this explanation is written on page 160 of Brazil's notes that you can read over here. Good, thank you.